Sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> I'm alive. Welcome back for another Deadline stream, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Less than two days since the last gimmick wrapped up, and we are back again with more FPL. Another Deadline stream. Anyone else love it when we've got these midweek deadlines? Non-stop footy. We've got five games on tonight, so lots to look forward to tonight, and obviously tomorrow, and then there's Thursday, and then we've got more games uh, next weekend as well. So it's good to have everyone back. Welcome everyone to the stream. I had to change the intro song to the stream for the first time ever, so that's a work in progress. Uh, annoyingly, I've been hit by a copyright uh, copyright troll, and my last few streams have been like struck by someone who's claimed my videos for copyright, even though all the music I use is copyright free. So that's something really annoying I've been dealing with in the background, but uh, I won't go go into a rant about that. So anyway, slightly different intro song, but welcome all to the stream, uh, Yasin, Cameron. Uh, FPL Canada Gaz, Tommy Runs, Toby, VHID, Ollie Jenkins, Bill Roth, AB, John Hamilton, Jan, Odran, and everyone else in the stream. Welcome all of you. How are we doing today? Oh, it's good to have midweek FPL. It's my favourite time of the season when we've got a busy schedule like this. Uh, and I've got two free transfers, so I'm going to make them during this stream. So lots to be excited for. Welcome everyone to the stream. Good to have you here. Who's everyone bringing in this week? Salah? I suppose, I suppose everyone who's not got Salah, or thereabouts everyone, is bringing Salah in, right? So yeah, it's pretty obvious that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, welcome to the stream, Ollie. Good to see Ash as well. Razvan, Immortal. Quite a few members in the chat. Welcome all of you to the stream. Henry says Mubama Masterclass. I don't know about that. I think we'll see Antonio lead the line again. Dan's rolling. Fair play. Sam's bringing Havertz. Love the Havertz pick. Hopefully he starts. Bit worried about midweek rotation for Arsenal and uh, Liverpool, but you've got to chase the upside, haven't you? Uh, Diego's going for Isaac, so's Cozy Cat vibes. Yeah, I love the Isaac pick. Fair play if anyone had him last week. Uh, Pelasan is on the wild card. Anyone else on the wild card this week? For anyone that watched the uh, experts video I made this morning, there was a couple of wild cards active, so uh, yeah, I think we're going to see quite a few wild cards this week. It does make sense. I just feel for people that wildcarded last week and picked up Lascelles, for example, immediately injured. We'll talk about Gusto as well. I'm actually going to bring Gusto in. I hadn't planned on it, but now there's rumours going around Twitter that he's in training. So I'll pull up all those tweets. We'll do the news roundup as usual. Uh, lots to cover. We've got the news roundup. We'll look at the scout selection, kings of the game week, most transfer players. We need to get our predicted scores in. So uh, get your questions in the chat and uh, I'll answer as many as possible. Uh, ben Wilder carded last week and picked up Lascelles and Gusto. Based on the rumours, Ben, I think you're okay with Gusto, but yeah, Lascelles is very unlucky. Uh, I mean, his estimated return date on the app now is December. So, uh, safe to say we won't see Lascelles this season. Or maybe next, if he doesn't stick around. I think his contract's up, isn't it, in the summer? Tony or Solanke? Uh, I'd say Solanke. Born for got nice fixtures. Palace, Luton... Uh, Man United and then the double game week. Uh, Tony, I mean, Brentford have got really nice fixtures as well, which um, I talked about it in this week's videos, actually. Like, if you're looking for, to go differential, no one's look, considering Tony, really. And Brentford have got such nice games coming up, but just no doubles, annoyingly. So I think most people are looking at Solanke, Darwin, uh, Haaland. I know Munoz is popular. He's on fire. Eight goals in eight games. But no doubles for Fulham either. Uh, Ishank says Toffolo better be one of your transfers in. You know what? I would if he had a double, but no Toffolo, sorry. Uh, FPL Chai in the, in the chat, Tony Differential FC. How, how are you doing uh, this week, Dylan? Are you still top 100? I'm sure I saw you tweet you had. Uh, is it no, Ars no Arsenal or no Liverpool? No Liverpool, I think. I mean, that's the kind of differential that like has to come off to break upwards, you know, and fight for FPL champion. Uh, but yeah, hopefully he's still in with a shout, Dylan. 
90 seconds. I mean, that's still solid. What do you mean 90 seconds with a sad face? Mate, all of us would kill to be 90 second in the world right now. I'm 73k. What rank is everyone in chat? Is anyone doing better than Dylan? How are we doing overall rank wise? How are we doing, Yusk? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Prod says I can get Saturn from minus 8 or just wildcard to get him in. What do you think? Depends who you're selling. I think a minus 8 for Sal is alright this week. I think the wildcards. If you've got your wildcard still and your team's in the right shape, I would save it for 35. Because then you can dead end into 34. And you can wildcard to prepare for the Dublin 36 uh, or 30. Yeah, 35 or 36. This is just a screenshot from one of my recent videos. Um, so we'll have the Dublin 35 or 36, and then we'll have the Dublin 37. So I think the Game Week 35 wildcard is really nice. Uh, King Nasso is 20k. Isaac is 3.2k. Equinox is uh, 1.7k. 130k. 85k, very nice. 96. 820k, 30k. Noctambuli, 206k. Good spread of ranks here. Nicky the Hippie is 37th. Jeez. You got competition in the chat there, Dylan. What was it? 30, 37th. I'm going to check the overall rankings and see if there's a Nicky in 37th. 37th is not a Nicky, it's Guy McComb. Are you lying to us or is that your account? Nicky the Hippie. 37th is uh, Guy McComb. His name is Macho Gusto, his team name. Oh, you're trolling. All right. I think Dylan's probably got the best rank here. Why aren't you streaming, Dylan? Don't you normally do deadline streams or are you away? Senior Lump says, good afternoon, Oscar. Wishing you a good game week. Love you. Love you too, Senior Lump. Wishing everyone a good game week. Track list is second. Second from bottom. 3.6k, 5.9k. Very nice. Will Trippier play? I don't know if we actually had a, an update on Trippier. Um, yeah, I actually don't... If anyone knows about Trippier, let me know. I imagine he does. There's rumours going around that Livermento's a doubt now. I mean, I don't even know what Newcastle's back line would be at this point. If Trippier's back, then he'll go right back. Left back, Burton. Craft and Cher centre back, maybe. Uh, FPL1, thanks for the super chat. It says, hi Oscar, should I get Bradley or a Wolves defender in for Doughty or do McAllister in for Huang? Uh, it means I go no Palmer for the next two game weeks, not free hitting in 34. Uh, no, I'd, leave the, I'd definitely leave the door open for Palmer. Like, he's got Sheffield United on the weekend and then Everton home. So I wouldn't block you, block a route to him. So Bradley or a Wolves defender. You're not free hitting 34, so I would probably go for a Wolves defender. Like Bradley might get one or two more games. And I know it's an insane fixture this week, but I think you have to look longer term in, in your case, right? If you get Bradley, unless you've got a back three already that doubles in 34, like if you've got Saliba, Gabriel, I don't know, some other doubler. But otherwise, I would... I would go for a Wolves defender. I think eight Nori makes the most, most sense. Although O'Neill did say last match he was a bit fatigued when he came off. Zabane, Gabriel, Saliba. I'd rather have a Wolves defender than Zabane in the Dublin 34 personally. Because they've got really nice fixtures before and after. Like the next five game weeks, look at this run they got. It's Burnley, West Ham, Forest. Double game week 34, both home games, and then Luton home. So I just think a Wolves defender makes sense, as opposed to Bradley, you know, maybe for one week. Especially if you're not free hitting 34. Uh, Jovan says, Salah or Son, I can only afford one. Watkins to who? Uh, definitely Salah for me. Got to be Salah if you're picking one. I know, uh, yeah, it's a difficult one. Like, a lot of people are selling Son for Salah, so I think that kind of answers the question. I mean, if we look at double digit hauls this season, only Salah's got more than Sun. Salah's got eight double digit returns. Sun's got seven. Palmer's also got seven. That's bad, by the way. Rodri, that is Rodri, isn't it? Rodri's got six double digit hauls. Gross has got five. Ariola's got four. I don't think I've caught any of those four. Has anyone else, like, not missed all of Ariola's double digit hauls? I certainly have. I don't remember getting any of them, but I know some people have. Uh, had a few of them. He's had four apparently. Yeah, I would prioritise Salah over Sun 100%. He's got the Dublin 34. He's got a better fixture this week. So Watkins to who? Depends who you can afford. Like Mateta is who I'm going to bring in. I'm looking to go Watkins to Mateta. 
I'll just show you my moves actually. So Watkins is out. So I'll go Watkins to Mateta. And then it'll be Gordon to Salah. And then it'll be Poro. I thought I didn't have the money for it for a second then. I do. I've got exact money. So that's quite fortunate. Uh, and then it'd be Poro to Gusto. So that's what I'm looking at. But obviously it depends who you can afford. Like if you've got loads of money, then obviously someone like Solanke or Darwin's even better. Uh, Cunha's okay, but we don't know if he's going to start because he wasn't even on the bench last game. Um, Suli says, should I bring in Diaz for Madison or Roll? I think that's worth it. I really do. I think this is a fixture you've got to target. I know, like, again, there's, there's rotation risk with a midweek game that's on paper as easy as Sheffield United at home, but I think you chase the upside, and Diaz doubles in 34. I mean, check this out. Um, from Rob TFPL, this is, he's kept track of all the fixtures this season and the projected goals, and we've got a new top two for the season. So Liverpool home to Sheffield United has got 3.6 projected goals which is the most of the entire season. That's good, actually. He's actually kept track of how many actually went in, so you can see how close they were. So maybe half matched it or outscored it. Uh, a couple got the same, and five underperformed. Although all of those underperformers still had two goals. And then with Arsenal home to Luton, 3.4 projected goals, which is the second most of the season as well. So I just think that's worth it. Chase the upside. I think we're going to have some huge scores this week if the players can live up to the hype. So, um, yeah, those are the moves I'm making. Uh, a few questions on Gusto. Yeah, we'll talk about him in a minute. There's rumours he's in training. Um, so I'm going to take the chance and bring him in. From my perspective, if I get Gusto and for whatever reason he doesn't make the next few games, then I've got Zabania home to Luton. I've got Van Dijk home to Man United. Uh, Van Dijk's home to Palace there. I'll play double Arsenal defence. So I've got good coverage as well. So um, that's why I'm going to just take the chance on Gusto. Because Chelsea got really nice games after this game week. And I don't need him this week. It's just those two, Sheffield United and Everton. Uh, William says, love your work, Oscar. Uh, could you discuss captaincy for this week? Um, no Salah holder. So either the armband goes to Saka or Haaland. Saka seems to be the risky pick due to all his game time uh, recently. Um, thanks for the super chat. Yeah, if I didn't have Salah then I would give it to Haaland so he's Haaland's gonna be my vice captain so yeah for me a pretty straightforward one I'm expecting a response I think um I think City beat Villa by a couple of goals this time around I know in the reverse fixture Villa were excellent but I think this one City gonna be far too much for them <clears throat> I mean we'll do the um scoreline predictions later but what do you what do you guys think the scoreline is gonna be City home to Villa Arsenal did really well to keep Haaland quiet, but I think I think City uh, win this one. Wouldn't surprise me if it's like 3-1 or something. And obviously Watkins is out as well, so that's a massive loss. 2-1, 2-0, 3-1, 1 as well. Yeah, I mean, 3-1 feels about right to me. And I think people are going to look at the last game and think, oh, Haaland blank again, but I wouldn't read too much into the Arsenal game. It was a pretty boring game. They, they kind of negated each other well. Um, yeah, for me, if I didn't have Salah, it'd definitely be Haaland. So yeah, I'd go Haaland captain, sack of ice in your position. Uh, what's your drink? It's a uh, Fanta lemon. It's really good, actually. It's gone a bit flat, but I don't mind that. What's everyone drinking? Hydration check. What's everyone got for this stream? Water, beer. Is Watkins completely out? He is, yeah. So we'll do the news roundup in a second because I've taken screenshots of all the main news from today and yesterday's press conferences. He's on the Fanta Orange. Tears. All <laughs> tears. Tea, coffee, H2O. Tea. All right. I get told off all the time by my girlfriend, but I, like, I love fizzy drinks. I only drink diet ones, by the way. Not sugar ones, but... I get told off all the time for not just drinking water. Water's boring for me. I, I very rarely just drink water, plain water. It's only 11, 11 on a Tuesday for Dan, so he's on the water, fair play. It's 12 past midnight in Tokyo for Dalboy Tokyo, so he's having a beer. 
Zach's fasting. Oh yeah, okay, we won't talk too much about food and drink. I made that mistake last year. I did like a takeaway poll or something when it was Ramadan um, and people weren't happy about it. So we'll move swiftly on from that. Yeah, you're right. I do need to drink more water. What time's the Liverpool game? Is he going to be fasting all day? It's an evening game, isn't it? So he'll be fasting all day and then he plays at half seven. What time do they break? What time do you break Ramadan? You have to forgive me. I'm... Um, a bit ignorant with religion and Ramadan and that sort of thing. But what time do, you, do they break it? Is it 8pm? I don't think it's actually much of a factor. I remember a couple of years ago looking into it. Like how was Salah's past performances when he was fasting? And there was no drop off. So like I don't think it's something to read into. I mean that's peak FPL isn't it? When you're like asking about Ramadan's effect on players. Oh it's just sunset. Okay. So... Maybe he'll break his fast right before the game or at half time or something. Depends on where you live. Okay. But what happens if you live somewhere like... I guess there's not many people on Ramadan at the North Pole. But you know there's some <laughs> countries where the sun never sets. Anyway, tangent. So, uh, yeah, should we jump into the news roundup? <laughs> should we cover all the main news from today? Because there's quite a lot. We'll start with Arsenal. So Arteta was asked about Saka because obviously he came off early last match. Um, and he said, he's fine. Uh, we haven't trained, just recovered. We have a short training session today to prepare for the game. And we'll see if he's in the best condition to start or not. And then following that training session, there was a tweet just before we went live that said, um, he's at the Arsenal open training session and Saka is out here training with his teammates. So that's good news for us Saka owners. And uh, obviously they're playing Luton and Rob Edwards said he's unsure if Doughty, Burke and Chong are going to be fit for the Arsenal game. And a further 10 first team players remain sidelined. So uh, yeah, definitely a fixture to target this one. Like if you've got Saka and Erdegaard, you're in a very good position in my opinion. You know, especially if you can't get to Salah, I think you have to just go for a fixture like this. You go for Diaz or you go for Saka and Erdegaard. Like there's points to be made up elsewhere. Bit of City news. Oh, Windows notification sound. Uh, Pep's, ruled out, Pep's ruled out Ake, Edison and Walker for uh, tomorrow's match against Villa. And John Stones is the only maybe. So no Edison, Walker or Ake. Ake obviously went off injured last match. So Vardial looks a good option, by the way. I think he's about 4.7 or 4.9. Um, most of you have probably seen this one already, but Lascelles is out for six to nine months with an ACL injury. Uh, Watkins has been ruled out of the game against City tomorrow, uh, away game for Villa. He could return to face Brentford on the weekend after a few days rest. Uh, Ramsey still sidelined. And lastly, just saw this on Twitter just before we went live. Uh, they said, believe Gusto chained with the trained with the Chelsea first team this morning. So, potentially promising news there. I don't know how reliable that is, but... As I said earlier, I'm going to bring Gusto in because in my position, if he ends up out, then I've got Gust, um, I've got Zabane who's got Luton next week. Um, I've got Van Dijk, so I've got a bit of depth there if he misses out. And I don't need to play him this week. Obviously, I'm going to play Van Dijk, Saliba, Gabriel. So Gusto would drop to the bench anyway behind Zabane. So I don't need him this week. So uh, for those asking about Gusto potentially promising news there based on those rumours that he's trained Palmer or Havertz I would say Palmer I just I just wonder if there's going to be a bit of rotation for Arsenal and it might not be Havertz but it could be you know we could see like Trossard uh, playing Jays is up front for example Martinelli left wing uh, we could see Zinchenko left back so Kirill gets a rest I'm expecting a few changes like that Good try says, why can I see PP on the bench? Pedro Porro. I'm going to sell him for Gusto as part of a minus four. These are the moves I'm looking to make. So it'd be Watkins to Mateta, Gordon to Salah, and then Porro to Gusto. Yeah, the only way I can get to Salah is a minus four that involves selling Porro. So Porro's got to be the one that goes. There's no way I'm selling uh, Van Dijk. Obviously, I'm not going to sell the Arsenal defenders, so it has to be Porro. And they're away to West Ham, to be fair. And this is probably the week now where Poro scores. 
for the first time this season. Long overdue, but it just makes sense for my team. So I'll start Mateta. Uh, obviously, I'll start Salah and captain him. And then Gusto will be second on the bench behind Zabane. Darwin, captain. If I knew he starts, I'd say he's definitely a captain, shall. I just, I don't know if I'd want to take the risk on his minutes. I don't know if I'd want to take that risk. I don't think it's 100% that he starts. What percentage do you guys think the Darwin starts is? Did I ask that right? I don't think I worded that well. You know what I meant. Like, what percentage likelihood does Darwin start? 70%? 50-50? 100%? Obviously, um, Jota's still injured. Gakpo's been out of form, so... Maybe, maybe he does and comes off early. 80%? Seventy. Sixty-four point six seven percent. So yeah, pretty much everyone thinks he's likely to start, then he's not. Some are pretty confident. It's just that small risk, isn't it? I'd rather captain Harland, or obviously Salah, but I assume you don't have Salah if you're looking at Darwin captain, because it's got to be Salah. Like he took twelve shots last match, which is the most he's ever taken in a league game. Pretty wasteful shot, some of them, but he's hungry for goals. He's home to Sheffield United, rock bottom in the league. Top v bottom. I mean, what more could you ask for? Uh, clean sheet odds, yeah? The clean sheet odds are as follows. So Liverpool, 52%. Arsenal, 49.5%. Uh, City, 43%. Bournemouth, 34 Sheffield United, 4.5% chance. So what's that like? They'd have to play 20 times to keep a clean sheet. Or 22-ish. Is Watkins available this week? Watkins is out. Watkins has been confirmed out for the uh, City game. So, yeah, I'm looking to sell him. So, if I sell him for Mateta and sell Gordon for Salah, I'm selling two players that are out. And I'm buying Salah. So, it just the moves just make themselves, to be honest. The only question mark was who to sell Poro for. It was either Bramthwaite or uh, Gusto. Or Richards. But I'm not a fan of Richards. Yeah, so Saka trained uh, with the squad today, so that's good. What's your FPL Challenge squad? Uh, let me pull it up. I actually wrote an article um, for the Premier League this week on my FPL Challenge team. Uh, this is what I've landed on. Uh, his strikers scored double this week as well. So I've captained Haaland, so quadruple points Haaland. So uh, yeah, that's the team I've landed on. Zoom out a bit. And you only get 100 mil this week. Last week it was unlimited budget. So uh, yeah, I've gone double Arsenal defence, double Liverpool defence, eight Nori. Uh, yeah, it's strikers score doubles. So you have to have a front three. And I've captain Haaland for quadruple points. Burn or Idogi? I think I'd start Idogi. I just Newcastle can't be trusted and they've just got so many injuries. I wouldn't feel comfortable starting a Newcastle player in any fixture right now. Which is why I, I benched uh, Dubravka last week. Annoyingly Neto conceded in like 87th minute or something. I don't know if anyone else had Neto or uh, Zabane last week but that was so painful because I had both. And they were, they were looking like the only team to keep a clean sheet. And then Neto... Neto? Neto went up for a cross and he like flapped it, spilled it, and then Beto buried it. Havertz or Foden? I mean, if you've got both, you just take the chance that Havertz starts, right? If, if it's uh, who to buy, then it has to be Foden, I would say. Just It's just a bit risky, isn't it, with Havertz? Does he start or does Arteta give Trossard or someone else a start? Smith Rowe, for example. Uh, Mo Omar, thanks for the super chat. He's got one free transfer. He's free hitting in 34, wild card in 35. So he's looking at Watkins and Madison to Haaland and Sarabia. Or Watkins to Darwin, Haaland and Gemic 33. Or Watkins and Morris to Darwin and Isaac and bench Madison. And then Isaac to Haaland and Gemic 33. I like, I like the first one the most, I would say. It's quite close though. Because it's a minus four. But I would say, uh, I'd say the first one makes the most sense to me. 
I think Sturabi is an awesome pick. I'm probably going to buy him game week 32. Like he's nailed because Neto's out. 4.7 mil. His underlying numbers are pretty solid as well. They're like comparable to Foden recently. So I'd take go for the first option. And also you just minimise your exposure to Haaland, right? Like imagine if Haaland bangs this week, which wouldn't surprise me at all. And obviously there's other options. You can't get him in 32 either. So I'd go the first option and take the minus four. Start Foden or Palmer. Hmm. I think I'd start Palmer. It's quite a close one that, but I'd say Palmer. FCH Sean, start one of Alvarez or Solanke. Hashtag FPL day. I would say Solanke. It wouldn't surprise me if Alvarez starts after being benched last game, but he just can't be trusted for minutes now. Now that all his attackers are back. So I would say Solanke. Uh, New Pal Media, thanks for the... What is that? Super sticker. Thanks for the super sticker, New Pal Media. Is Cunha fit? Um, yeah, he's re reportedly trained, but whether he starts is another question. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a cameo and then starts next weekend. But yeah, he definitely could start. If I knew he, if I knew he started, I probably would have bought him this week as well. But I didn't want to take the chance because the striker I buy, I need to start. So yeah, instead it's going to be Mateta for me. I'd love to get Semenyo who's even cheaper, but I've got triple Bournemouth, which is a bit of a mad position to be in. But So yeah, Mateta for me. I'll play him this week. I'll have to bench him against City and Liverpool. And then he's got the home Dublin 34, um, West Ham and Newcastle. Both home games. Neither defence is pretty good either. And he's got, what, three goals in his last four? Can't ask for more than that in a 4.9 4 mil uh, midfield, midfield forward. Uh, Kay says, Team ID, he's on uh, free hit 34, uh, bench boost 37, who to sell the sales for, Dallo, Vardio or Van Heck? I don't normally do Team IDs, but I will have a look here, because you're way too generous with that super chat. You didn't have to do that, Kay. Let's have a look at your team. For anyone else, I'm, I'm not going to do Team IDs. I, I want to help like, as many as possible, but the Team IDs are a bit of a faff, because I have to load it up in the background and then switch windows. Uh, but this is his team, let's have a look. So you're free hitting 34, bench boost 37. Who to sell the sales for? Dalo, Vardy or, or Van Heck? I would say Vardy. I mean, your team looks really good, to be fair. I'm guessing you must have just wildcarded. Yeah, I would say Vardy. Is there anyone else that I'm not considering? How much have you got? You've got 2.3 mil on the bank. So oh, you can't afford Gabriel, just about. Yeah, I'd say Vardy. I'd say Vardio. Especially because you're free hitting 34. And he's got the double in 37. Yeah, Vardio makes the most sense to me. Dallas okay as well, but you don't want to start him. Whereas Vardio, I'd be happy starting him this week. City without uh, Watkins as well. Yeah, go for Vardio. Thanks for that. Uh, as H says, Hi Oscar, please choose two players to play. At least one of them should be a defender. Poro Regulon, Sarabia Munez. So two to play. You know what? I think I'd play Regulon over Poro this week. I think I'd actually start Regulon. So Sarabia or Munez. Who have Fulham got again? Who have Fulham playing? They play away to Forest. That was it. Sarabia or Munez. Hmm. That's quite a close one. Forest underlying numbers are actually solid, but he has scored eight and eight, so it just seems mad to bench someone so in form. So I would say regular on Munoz. So that is a close one, to be fair. How are we doing, Flames? Welcome to the stream. Is he suspended? I thought he was back. I, was in a, I thought it was a one-game suspension. Yeah, he's back. Yeah, he's available. He's back from suspension now. Oh, FC8 Sean with the five gifted memberships. Thanks very much for that, Sean. If anyone got one of those from Sean, make sure you thank him in the chat. Thanks for your support there, uh, Sean. SpongeBabe says I dodged, as always. They get given out to random people that are in chat.
Munoz or Gusto? Oh. Given that Gusto went off injured last match, and although he's rumoured to be in training, we don't know if he's fit enough to start or not. And he does have Man United. So I would say Munoz. And King Oscar we trust. Sean with the teddy emojis. Yeah, he's somewhere. I, I chucked him a chew just now. Normally as I go live, I just give him a chew to keep him busy. Bless him, because it's like two hours I do these streams for, so. Wildcard or not the right time. It's really team dependent. It's definitely fine to wildcard this week. You've still got time to watch the experts video from uh, today. There was two wildcards active and they talked about why they did it. Cullen says, where can I find those FPL cards? Yeah, thanks uh, everyone that played along with that. Or if anyone doesn't know, it was an April Fool's, uh, I'm afraid to say. Yeah, not real. I made these in Photoshop, printed them off. I felt a bit bad actually. Quite a few people were like, I went to the shops and they didn't have them anywhere. People were like, I went to Waitrose and they didn't have the cars. And then I tried the news agents. So yeah, if only these were real. I mean, the game didn't make sense, like the scoring system. But uh, yeah, that was quite a good prank, I thought. But uh, yeah, sorry if anyone watching this went to the shops to buy some. Yeah, I made them in Photoshop. They're not real. How long did it take to make? You know what's crazy? So I thought of it back in like December. So whenever I had like a spare 10 minutes, I'd make a card in Photoshop using a template. So I actually couldn't tell you. Not that long. Maybe like an hour or two to make all the cards. And then, yeah, cutting and sticking took a while. But what was crazy, right? I thought of it months ago. And then they literally launched FPL Challenge the week before. So it played into that perfectly. Like they were launching a new card game plus launching FPL Challenge. That was just like unbelievable timing. You have too much time on your hands. I mean, that's true. But FPL is my full-time job now, so I can spend it however I want with FPL stuff. I actually quite enjoyed it. It was like one of the funnest videos I made all season, even though the views were probably the worst. It was a good prank. It was the first video I've ever done as well, talking to the camera, so that was a bit different. I took some getting used to. Nunez news. I don't think there's been any. I think he's just fine. He was just brought up early last match. Maybe with a view to starting him against Sheffield United. Is Saka available? Yeah, Saka's okay. He's been uh, in training. Uh, Arteta said he's fine. Uh, he said we haven't trained just recovered and they've got a light training session and then someone tweeted who was at the open training session and said Saka is out training with his teammates so all good as far as Saka is uh, concerned I mean there's still a chance he doesn't start like I think he might be a risky captaincy I'd rather captain Salah or Haaland over Saka just in case just in case but if I was to guess I would say he starts and then comes off after like 60 or so minutes Assuming Arsenal are a couple of goals up. Poll I did, Teddy on shoulder, yes or no? I mean, it's it's ultimately up to him. I don't know where he is. Once in a blue moon, he comes over to get on my shoulder during streams, but he doesn't normally like it when I'm talking. He doesn't sit on my shoulders when I make videos anymore. As soon as I start rambling into the mic, he disappears. Mr. F says, Foden, Darwin, start. Don't have Haaland. I'd rather start Darwin between those two. Like I was saying earlier, this fixture has got the highest projected goals of the entire season. 3.6 projected goals uh, according to the bookies or spread X. I don't know if that's bookies. Um, graphic from Rob TFPL. Arsenal home to Luton actually comes in at second highest of the season as well. So I would definitely start Darwin. Even if there's that small element of doubt whether he starts or not. You've got to chase the upside. And for me, Darwin's more upside than uh, Foden is. New Pal Media says, Gordon for Sun or Foden? Uh, Foden, no hit. Sun requires a minus four hit. Transferring Watkins out for who? Munez, Erdegaard, no hit. Hmm. I'd rather Sun, if I'm honest. It's close though, if you have to take a minus four. And it depends who you can afford for Nupel. 
four for Nupal. A forward for uh, Watkins. Like, if you can afford someone like Darwin, then that's a no-brainer. But if you're looking at that budget for, like, Munez, I prefer Mateta, assuming you're not on free hit 34. Because Mateta's got a double in game at 34. Munez doesn't have, any, doesn't have any more doubles the rest of the season. So I'd rather Mateta. Uh, he's 4.9 mil, so he's not much more than Munez. I think I'd rather that. I mean, like we said earlier, this season only Salah's got more double-digit hauls than uh, Sun. Sun's got seven, Salah's got eight. So I would rather go Sun myself. And Mateta over Munez. If I knew Cunha would start, I'd say Cunha's the best of the bunch. Better player than Mateta and a better team, but there's a chance he doesn't start this one. If you can afford to bench him, then get Cunha. Because he's got better fixtures uh, after this week as well. Uh, virtual, thanks for the five months. Wildcard will take a minus four this week and then next this week and next for Salah. I mean, it's now or never for Salah. I mean, you can obviously get him next week, but you're missing out on the best fixture of the season. Is that what you mean? It's hard to say about knowing your whole team, but if your team's in bad shape and you haven't got Salah then I would consider pulling the wildcard this week. But it depends on other factors, like how you're going to set up for 34. Because if your team is looking like it's going to struggle in 34 as well, then you can obviously wildcard now. Take advantage of the fixtures in front of you, like Liverpool home to Sheffield United, Arsenal home to Luton, and build towards 34. But if you can get to Salah in the minus four, do that. Uh, Shuab says, if you had to pick one, Munoz or Solanke, I'd say Solanke. Yeah, Solanke for sure. As says goalkeeper to play, Dubravka or Flecken? I would say Flecken. What's the clean sheet odds saying on that? Newcastle just look like conceding every game right now. 27%. Brentford 22. Who would you guys rather play? I just think there's so many injuries at Newcastle. They just look so ropey. I've got second choice keeper. Trippy might not be back. There's rumours Livermento's out. The sales have done his ACL. I like, could see Burn in centre back or Kraft. I think I'd rather play Flecken for the sake of 5% worse clean sheet odds. Latif says Dubravka. Alex says Flecken. I think Flecken as well. Pope injury news. Apparently he could be back before the end of the season. So Dubravka's. I doubt whether he plays in double game week 37 as well. Yeah, I saw a tweet that um, Pope could be back a few weeks before the end and obviously hope to make the Euro squad as well. Isaac or Darwin? I would say Darwin. Anana or Petrovic? Petrovic. Sell Sun or Foden? I'd rather sell Foden. Who are you captaining? I'm going to buy Salah and then I'll captain Salah. These are the three moves I'm looking to make. Did I just open Steam again? I do this every stream. Let me close Steam. I need to move where it's pinned to because I always click it by accident. Let's move it there. That's better. Yeah, I'm looking to go Watkins to Mateta, Gordon to Salah, and then Poro to Gusto. And then I'll captain Salah, vice captain Haaland. Dab says Cunha starts. My mate who works as a groundsman has confirmed. How would the groundsman know that? Isn't their job to just maintain the pitch? Or do they play in like bibs versus non bibs depending on who starts? Yeah, I play games to Nero. Not that much anymore to be honest. Nowhere near as much as when I was younger. But I, I play like FC24 with mates and a bit of Rocket League and Football Manager. Anyway, you heard it from Dab's mate, who's the groundsman. He says Cunha starts. He wasn't even on the bench last match, though. Which is a bit worrying. I thought we might see a cameo and then a start, but you never know. He could come straight in. It was a bit odd, though, that he didn't even make the bench. And then they have to play a few days later. It's not even like he's got the whole week to recover. Where's the chair from? I'm actually not sure. 
It was a gift when I moved in and bought this place. I think my mum just got it from a charity shop. Cheap chair. You know what's mad as well? I bought a proper gaming chair, but Teddy couldn't sleep on my shoulders with that chair. So I returned it. Rank in Rocket League. Uh, my best rank is Grand Champ 3, I think. But I don't play enough hours. But I do need to get a lobby going sometime, because that was really fun when I set up a public lobby. It was uh, 4v4. Yeah, we'll definitely do that at some point. It's bad. I've got like 2,700 hours logged on Rocket League. Ain't no real Munoz to start. Okay, I think you've got to start Munoz there, haven't you? Eight goals and eight. What's a Rocket League? It's just a football game, basically. But you're driving in cars. It's very hard, but it's good. How are we doing, Andre? Welcome to the stream. Barnsworth a punt. I'd only punt on him on, um, on challenge or draft. He's not worth it in the main game because... I mean, he might carry on starting. If I think Almiron might miss a few games, so he could carry on starting, but not for me. Not for me. Timothy in the chat, good to see you, mate. Welcome. Right, let's pull up the scout selection. Let us know in chat how many players you've got from the scout this week. 6k hours in Rocket League and still bad. 6,000 hours. How can you have 6,000 hours and be bad? I think you're playing it down. There's no way you're bad with 6k hours. Anyway, the scout selection is Dubravka, Gabriel, Robinson, Bradley, uh, Salah, Captain, Son, Saka, Luis Diaz, Havertz, Haaland, and Munez. Even Napier's got eight. Fando's got seven. So I've got... I don't count Dubravka because he's on my bench. So one, two, three, four... Just five for me. Matty's got four. So is Jan and Adamiola and C. Six for cozy cat vibes. Good team this week, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know someone like Havertz gets rotated. Free hit active. Don't know if I would have used mine in a week like this. It's a single game week, but if you've already activated, then fair play. I think most people that still have theirs are going to use it at 34. I guess some might save it for 37. Mark's got three. Who's my FPL challenge team? I've gone double Liverpool defence, double Arsenal defence. Uh, what else did I have? Saka, Salah Havertz. This week it's double points from strikers, so you get quadruple points from your captain if you captain a striker. So uh, I'm giving it a go. Like, I'm playing casually. I'm not doing videos about it or anything, but I'll give it a go. And I did write an article for uh, Official FPL this week, so I've got to give it a good go, haven't I? So yeah, Haaland captain or quadruple captain, uh, Darwin and Isaac, my front three. But yeah, with challenge, you can make changes up until kickoff. So like if Havertz doesn't start, I'll just swap him for Erdegaard or something like that. Are you guys liking FPL Challenge or are you not sold on it? Seems to get be getting a mixed re mixed reception. Your FPL Challenge rule is Captain Nunez every week. I mean, you, that could be huge this week on, on uh, double striker points. Maybe we'll do a poll on that. Are you playing FPL Challenge? The poll is up. If anyone's got poll ideas, let us know as well. Uh, Super Chat. Hi, mate. Son, Watkins, and Ake to Salah, Darwin, and Bradley. So, Son, Watkins, Ake to Darwin, Bradley, Salah. Or Foden, Watkins, and Ake to Salah, Cunha, and Ain't Nori, or Kivio. No free hit. Plan is to wildcard 35. Bench boost 37. Yeah, I think the first one's miles better for me. Yeah. Again, if we knew Cunha started, like I think it'd be closer. But for me, the first what the first option's miles better. It is difficult. Like I know a lot of people are selling some. If you saw the experts video this morning, I think Sun was the second or third most sold player. 
because not everyone can get to Salah easily. In my case, I can just about scrape him out with exact money and keep some. But for a lot of people, I mean, I don't think it's bad, you know, going Sun to Salah if you're also buying Darwin. Because in my case, I have to buy Mateta, so I do miss out on double Liverpool attack. So there are two sides to it, but yeah, I would go for the first route. Uh, Max, thanks for the super chat. Start Bramfrey, Cloyver, or Taylor? I definitely wouldn't start Taylor, so it's Bramfrey or Cloyver. Cloyver? I always forget to say it. It's Cliver, isn't it? I said it wrong in a video, and there was loads of comments like that. It's not how you say Cliver. It's Cliver, isn't it? Bramfrey or Cliver? I'd probably take a chance on Cliver. I'd be surprised if Bramfway keeps a clean sheet away at Newcastle. But I don't think you're going to get much from either of them. But I'd start Cliver. Uh, Tim says, like and subscribe, everyone. Let's make this the best FBO challenge in the multiverse. Uh, anyways, Erdegaard in for Foden. Already Oscar. Wish me luck. Best of luck, Tim. Thanks for the super chat. And uh, thanks for encouraging everyone to like and subscribe. Appreciate that. Thanks for support, Tim. It's Clive Owen. <laughs> Clover. It's Clover, isn't it? So 53% aren't playing challenge. 47% are. I'll be interested to know how one side of the captain poll is this week. Or perhaps not. Let's stick a captain poll up. Who's your captain? Salah. Uh, I guess it'd be Salah, Saka, Haaland and other. You could have Sun in there. So if you vote other, message and chat. Poll is up. Get your votes in. <laughs> I'll lock in my moves in maybe like half an hour. There's not really anything to wait for, but I like to make my moves later, if possible. I decided to ride out the Salah price rise on the weekend. At this point in the season, I think you have to be careful not to chase price rises too much. I think it was okay to go early in the weekend, but for me at this point in the season, you spent the whole season accumulating team value. So it's not gonna it's gonna make much less of a difference now. I guess team value is inversely proportional to how far into the season you are in terms of how useful it is. Like chasing a potential 0.1 mil profit and salary at this point is pretty meaningless. I say that now, I'm gonna to get to my wildcon 35 and I'm gonna be 0.1 mil off the dream lineup. Uh, Alex says wildcard active, his team is Raya Bradley. Bradley vice captain. White, Taylor, Havertz, Sun, Salah, Palmer, Munez, Haaland, Nunez. And he's got Petrovic, Foden, Gusto, Maguire. Hmm. Very good team. I'm just a bit, I'm not sure about Taylor. I'd swap Taylor out. You could go for Richards. I'm not sure if Richards starts this one, but I, Richards is the same price, isn't he? And he's got Dublin 34. Yeah, I'd get Richards over Taylor. The rest is great. Havertz is a little bit punty, but don't hate it. No Saka. Is there no way you can afford Saka? I guess not. Yeah, I guess not. I would I would get one of the centre backs over White, I think. I don't know how much you got in the bank, but if you went White to Gabriel, can you afford Havertz to Erdegaard, for example? And then go Taylor to Richards. The rest is great. Yeah, I like the rest. Good team. Good wildcard. If I was going to wildcard, it'd be very similar to that. Maybe just two or three players different. Uh, James Storkey says, Oscar, Ariola to Kelleher for a minus four. What are you saying? Who's your other keeper, James? Depends who your other keeper is, Storkey. If you literally don't have a keeper, then I would do it, yeah. But... I don't like minus fours for keepers. I almost never take them. It probably happens like once every two seasons for me. Just because keepers are generally very low ceiling, aren't they? Like with a defender, even that I don't like. But there's always a chance they can get an attack in return. But keepers, you're just counting on save points. So, depends who your other keeper is. Hits for a keeper is alright if you literally don't have a keeper. You know, if you've got like Johnston and uh, Ariola, then you take a hit for a keeper. It's fine then. 
And also, if you've got a keep of a really bad fixture, then I suppose you could justify it. Like, if you've got Kaminsky and Areola, then I think it's all right to sell Areola for a hit. Because realistically, Kaminsky probably gets like one point. Who instead of Watkins? No free hit. Jesus, Mateta or Cunha? If I knew Cunha starts, I would say him. If you can afford to bench him, I would get Cunha. If you need to start them, I'd say Mateta. Jesus is just a bit, just a bit too risky for me. He's not a reliable starter. Can I get hello Oscar? Yeah, shout out to Jay. First in the chat again today. Thanks for that, Jay. What's behind the green screen? You know what? I actually don't have a green screen. I've gotten so lazy with it. I downloaded this software that just filters out automatically. So no green screen, but it's just my bedroom behind me. Nothing interesting behind me. I thought you were getting Bradley. No, I was never going to get Bradley. If I've got Bradley, then I can't get Darwin. So for me, it makes the most sense to leave that door open. So I'm looking to go Watkins to Mateta, Gordon to Salah, and then Porro to Gusto, and then I'll bench Gusto. And then I just have to hope that Gusto is okay. There were rumours that he's been in training this morning. So if he's alright for Sheffield United and Everton, that's perfect for me. And then I'll bench him in 34. I looked at Bramfweight, but I'd only play him in 31. And then uh, that's it. I wouldn't need him in 34. And I looked at Richards, but I literally wouldn't play him at all. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. In 34, reluctantly, I'd probably sell Haaland for Darwin. Is anyone else thinking about that? That's going to be a difficult transfer to make, but I think it's a logical one, isn't it? In 34. Haaland does have Brighton away. Like, make no mistake, he could smash it there, but I think it makes sense to sell Haaland for a double gimmick forward like Darwin, who will have Fulham and Everton. So that's, that's why I'm not going to get Bradley. I'm going to leave the door open for Darwin in 34. Connor says, start Palmer or Solanke. Start Gusto or Bramthwaite. I would take a chance with Gusto and just play him. It was quality last match. Gusto and is very unlucky to get nothing there. Palmer or Solanke? I think you can't bench Palmer in current form. Yeah, I'd start Palmer. I mean, Solanke's doing well as well, but I'd start Palmer. Sell Alvarez or keep? I think I'd get rid of him at this point. Way too much of a rotation risk. Will there be any team news tonight? Yeah, we can do the team news roundup. Um, we did it maybe like half an hour ago, if you want to rewind and find that segment. Maybe less, maybe it was like 10, 15 minutes ago. We'll do it again though, before the deadline. But for those that literally just saw it, uh, we'll wait a bit. One week punt on Havertz? Yeah, I think Havertz is a sound one week punt. Obviously, whether he starts is a question, but I think for a one week punt, why not? I prefer Luis Diaz, I think, if you don't have triple Liverpool for about the same price. John says, Oscar, I don't have a question for you. Thanks, John. McAllister or Rice? It depends how many Liverpool players you got, because I think McAllister is actually a pretty sound pick. He, I thought he was man of the match last match. He was unbelievable. And his underlying numbers have been really good in recent weeks. No, I'm going to buy Salah, Alexander. I haven't made my transfers yet. I'll leave it on this screen so people know what my plans are. What was the question? McAllister. I've forgotten it now. Or oh, Rice, yeah. I'd rather McAllister, but it depends on your Liverpool setup because I'd rather leave the door open to get Darwin as well as Salah. So, like, in my case, there's no way I'm looking at McAllister or Diaz because I've got double Liverpool and I'd rather leave the opportunity to buy Darwin and Gemic 34 when he doubles. Any Cunha update? Yeah, he's reportedly trained. Don't know if he'll start or not, but he, he's apparently available for selection. Triple captain time. No, if I triple captain, I'd save it for one of the doubles. Obviously, if you've got still got your free hit and bench boost then I guess I'd use it in uh, game week 36 
Uh, maybe on Palmer, to be honest. Like, he's got two home games. The expectation is that... Oh, you can't see that, can you? The expectation is that he doubles in 36. So that would be his double. Um, Palmer would have West Ham and Spurs home. Uh, Spurs would have Liverpool away and Chelsea away. I mean, Sun's got a great record against top teams. So I think Sun triple captain. But... Yeah, if you're not using a chip in either of these weeks, I'd rather use it in 34 or 37, like triple captain Salah there, or triple captain Haaland in uh, 37. Austin says, hi Oscar, just subscribe. Thanks very much, Austin. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks to anyone else who subscribed during the stream. And if you're not subscribed, then make sure you hit that button. Sarabia or Garnacho? If you're not free hitting a 34, Sarabia edges it for me. I'm not sure about Robertson, actually. If anyone knows what the latest is on Robertson, let us know in chat. I imagine he's still out. Yeah, Watkins is confirmed out. So that's some of the big news from today. What's your transfers? I'm looking to go Watkins to Mateta, Gordon to Salah, and then Porro to Gusto. Day 61 of calling Focal Smexy Geezer. Smexy geezer, Jesus. Turner to Kelleher for a minus eight. Ariel is my second keeper. Yeah, I would do it. As bad as it sounds on paper, taking a minus eight for Kelleher. You've got no keeper that plays, so I would do it. What's the best keeper rotation for the rest of the season? Probably Petrovic and Raya, but it's quite expensive. Arsenal doubling 34. Chelsea doubling 35 and 37. I mean, it's not been announced. Sorry, 36. It's not been announced, but Ben Cradlin and the other fixture gurus are expecting it to be here. So you'd get three double game weeks out of the Raya and Petrovic rotation. So that's what I would say. But if you're tight for money, then just get a cheaper one that doubles in 34, like Henderson or Pickford. Alex says, thanks for the feedback on my wildcard. Uh, when I change White to Gabriel, I can then change Havertz to Martinelli, but not for Erdegaard. No, I think Martinelli's even riskier. Yeah. I probably wouldn't do that. I'd just leave Havertz in. It's difficult to predict what the lineup would be. Like, Martinelli came off the bench last match, so he could start this one, to be honest. But Havertz has just been a more consistent starter, so I'd rather go for him between the two. And Arteta's been um, experimenting with Jesus in left wing. So he's got Jesus, Martinelli and Trossard that could all play there. So, yeah, I prefer Havertz. I mean, White's great as well. I'm just, I just wonder if there could be rotation at some point in the coming weeks. Maybe this game. Maybe not. Like Tommy Asu is back. He came off the bench last match. He can play right back or left back. Now we might see might see Zinchenko left back, Tommy Asu right back, or he might just rotate one side. In which case, probably Zinchenko for uh, Kirill. Start Palmer. Yeah, definitely start Palmer. Palmer on Munez. I'd start Palmer. Why are you bringing in Gusto? I need a player that looks good for gaming. 32 and 33 and they've got Sheffield United and Everton I don't need him for 34 I'll bench him because I've got Van Dyke and the double Arsenal defence um, obviously he's flagged so like if he does miss out then I've got depth as well like I've got Zabania he's got Luton away there uh, I've got Van Dyke. he's got Palace home so I've got good depth in terms of defenders so I just think it actually is worth taking the risk for the upside in Gusto Whereas if I get... The only other option is Bramthwaite. And Bramthwaite, I'd only play him in 32 home to Burnley. So, like, I'd be taking a minus four for someone to play for one week. So I just think I might as well take the chance on Gusto. Because he's got way more upside. And better fixtures. Yeah, it's a playlist. It's just a copyright free music playlist. Diaz captain if no Salah. I mean, these are the projected points. I would rather captain Haaland. 
than Diaz. Salah's on 9.7. That is ridiculous, by the way, for a single game week. I think that's the highest I've ever seen in a single game week. What's the background music? The background song is Boxer Meet Canvas by Wilding. It's actually my cousin, the artist that's on now. Um, Salah, 9.7 points. Haaland, 7.5. Saka, 7. Darwin, 6.7. Erdegaard, 6.6. .6. Diaz, 6.3. So I'd rather captain Haaland if you're not going to captain Salah or if you don't have him. Yeah, it's my cousin. What's my FPL challenge team? Uh, I'll show you. That's my lineup on FPL challenge this week. It could change depending on if anyone's benched or that sort of thing. Like if Havertz doesn't start, I'll get Erdegaard or Martinelli or someone like that. Uh, you get double points off your strikers this week, so quadruple points of Haaland. First time ever that you get quadruple points on one player. Does Bradley start? You'd expect him to, but it's never guaranteed. Like, Klopp could look at this game and think, I'll play Simicast left back, Gomez right back. But Trent is still out, so I'd say his chances are very good. And if I had him, he'd definitely play him. Start Palmer or Foden? I'd go Palmer. You know, United's underlying numbers have been so bad recently. Like, over the last six game weeks, they're second worst to expected goals conceded after Luton. So, yeah, don't bench Palmer. Fantasy Football Chronicles. Hi, Oscar. Would you start Richarlison or Sarabia? I think Richarlison starts this one, so I'd start Richarlison. Quite close, because Sarabia will start, and he's got a good fixture himself, but I'd start Richarlison. How long's Edison out? I don't think it's a long-term one. Uh, Premier Injuries says... Potentially the 6th of April, so it could be back game week 32. Ake's is 17th April. Walker could be back on the weekend, maybe game week 33. Right, guesses in the chat. One hour to the deadline. Who's going to be the top scorer of game week 31? No one got it last week. Brereton Diaz. Guesses in the chat. Who's it going to be this time? Minus 12 or wildcard. I think at this point, I'd rather wildcard than take a minus 12 to answer Joshua's question. Yeah, I think at that point, I'd rather wildcard. Saravia, big shout from John. Havertz says Sam. Latif says Salah. Brownhill, Salah, Salah, Palmer, Darwin. Munoz, that is a left field shout. Martin says bold, but Salah. Come on, be realistic. It's not going to be Salah. That is, that is bold. Regulon, Doku. Yeah, of all the players, Brereton Diaz. By the way, they've put three goals past Fulham, who literally the match before, Fulham beat Spurs 3-0. How are we doing, Bashir? Welcome to the stream. I'm good, thanks. McAllister, Saka, Connor Bradley, Beto, Saka. I think it's going to be an Arsenal player, a Liverpool player. And that's, <laughs> that's obviously not a hot take. That's not a top analysis there, but... It'd be someone random. It'd probably be like Martinelli. You can get the fixture right, but it'd be someone like you least expect. That's how it tends to go. 60 million down the drain. You know what? Havertz has been class recently. He's been really good recently. Definitely not down the drain, in my opinion. Hasn't he already scored more than he's ever scored in a Chelsea season? I think Arteta is still going to get the absolute best out of him, but he's looking really good recently. And if he starts, like it could easily be Havertz this week. Daniel says, Hi Oscar, do you think this week is triple captain territory? No, I'd use it in a double game week. I don't think I'll ever triple captain in a single game week for the rest of my FPL days. Unless the, the doubles are absolutely shocking, but we've got some really nice double game weeks to come. Obviously, it depends on what chips you've got left, but like in game week 34, Liverpool have got doubles, so Salah. In game week 37, City double, so Haaland's an option. 
Spurs are going to double in 36 and 37, so you could triple captain some. Chelsea are going to double in 36 and 37, in all likelihood, so Palmer even. So I'd rather triple captain in a double game week every day of the week. Although, yeah, I remember John, back in game week four, start of the season. Who, was it um, Haaland used it on John? Was it Fulham? Who did he have then? Yeah, game week four, Fulham. I remember that. I was like, John, I'm not sure. It can work in single game weeks, don't get me wrong. And it, it paid off for John. But for me, mathematically, you're always likely to get more in a double game week because they play twice. But yeah, it can work in a, a single. Like If anyone uses it on Salah this week, he could be massively rewarded. He could be off after like 60, 70 minutes if the game's wrapped up before Man United on the weekend. But he could do the damage by then as well. As long as it's not another... Eight, was it 8-0? They beat Bournemouth and Salah blanked. There was like eight players that returned that game. Or I guess like it was 11 or plus if you include clean sheets. But Salah blanked. I don't, that still gives me PTSD, that game week. I, I still don't know how that's possible. The king of FPL blanking in an 8-0. Or was it 9-0? I think it was 8. Was it 9-0? I thought it was 8-0. Start Sata or Mateta? Start Saka, 100%. Havertz or Diaz? I would say Diaz. He's looked really good recently, Diaz. Not so much earlier in the season, but understandably so. I'd say Diaz. It was 9-0. Jeez. And he blanked in a 9-0. That is mad. That is peak FPL, peak variance. Let's get uh, the scorelines in before we forget. Newcastle v Everton. What are we saying for this one? When you put your prediction in chat, put the team as well, so that I know which one you're on. Otherwise, I might put the wrong score against the wrong team. Newcastle, Everton, what are we saying for this one? Both teams to score? Stephen or Stefan says, uh, Hi Oscar, play Vardy or 8 Nori. You've got to play 8 Nori against Burnley. More attacking player. Like Vardy is very unlikely to get you anything. Just a clean sheet, I'd say at best, is his ceiling. But 8 Nori's is way higher. 3 1 Newcastle, even without Gordon. 2 0. 4 2. I reckon it'll be a bit tighter than that. LV says 1 all. Mohamed says 2 1. We'll go with 2 1. Not on a Forest v Fulham. Is Munez's streak going to carry on? Mr. Brav says Isaac or Munez. I'd start Isaac. I'd start Isaac with the home fixture. 2 0. Put the team as well so I know which one you're on. 1 all, John reckons. I think that feels about right. I think it's going to be a low score in one. Yeah, I agree. One all. All right. Bournemouth Palace. And I know there's a lot of you that have got Solanke, but keep it realistic. Bournemouth Palace. Michael says, with the uncertainty about Cunha and Mateta's tough fixtures, would you consider Munez until 34 and then swap for a doubler? If you're in a position where you're going to have leftover transfers, and I think that's fine. If you need to start them this week, then I prefer Mateta over Cunha. If you can afford to bench them, I prefer Cunha. And then just bench him this week. Two one. Yeah, I mean, I prefer Mateta, but it does depend on the rest of your team, because I can afford to bench him. If you can't, then I'd say go Munoz. 2-1, okay. Burnley v Wolves. Burnley versus Wolves. What are we saying for this one? What do you reckon, John? Sarabia Hall? 4-1. 4-1. 1-0. 2-1. You reckon they keep a clean sheet? I'm not backing many clean sheets. A lot of people are saying 2-1, so we'll go for that. West Ham v Spurs. West Ham v Spurs. Predictions? 
Sarabia Brace, Cunha comes on and scores a brace also. That would be nice. Sarabia would be about 6 mil by Gamic32. I'm probably going to bring him in, by the way. Gamic32, Sarabia. Two all? Yeah, I think both teams score again. 2-1 Spurs, 3-1, 3-2. I think you're right. I think most people are saying both teams to score. I reckon 2 all's right. K says 2 all as well. Maybe 3-2 Spurs. We'll go with that. By the way, we haven't got a single red arrow since I started asking the stream to do the predictions. So, you guys know ball. Arsenal v Luton then. DVC reckons 5-1 Arsenal. You reckon Luton get one? I'm, no, I'm backing an Arsenal clean sheet here. I'm back in an Arsenal clean sheet. Doughty's a doubt. Chong's a doubt. Burke's a doubt. They've got 10 other first team players out. Honestly, I think, yeah, I think people saying five are about right. Should we go four? Is that a bit too wishful to say five? Four, five, four, nil. Three, nil, four, nil. Yeah, I think that's about right. Brentford, Brighton. Any leaks? I'll have a check actually as soon as we finish this. We've got a few more teams to get the predictions in for. Brentford v Brighton. If it's 4 or 5, geez, title race over. 2 all. Everyone's saying 2 all. Okay, we'll go 2 all. 1 all. I actually think 2 all's about right. I agree with that. City versus Villa. Obviously, Villa. Without Watkins. Do City keep a clean sheet? I guess it'd be Duran up top, right? 8 0 City. I'm not putting that in. It lets you go up to 12 here. That is mad. 3 0. 3 1. Most people are saying 3. It's just how many do Villa score, if any. I'm actually going to go. Okay, people are saying Villa to score, so we'll put one. Oh, we'll we'll fit. Yeah, we'll finish with Liverpool last. Chelsea v Man United. Chelsea v Man United. We'll come back to Liverpool. We'll finish on the best one. Three 0 Chelsea. I don't know if they keep a clean sheet. 2-1 to United. Do you reckon an away win? I mean, Chelsea are out of form, aren't they? 2-0 to United. 2-1. 3 all. 2 all. Maguire own goal. Maguire just out here catching strays. 2 all. Alright. We'll finish with Liverpool and then Sheffield United. And then we'll get back to it. Liverpool v Sheffield United. Thursday, 4th April. 7.30pm. Altitude 100 meters. Why has it got the altitude here? Didn't know that. So Anfield is 88 meters above Stamford Bridge. 5 0. I think I agree with that. I think we'll go for that. Perfect. The guesses are in. Thanks for the predictions. So far, not a single red arrow getting chat to do the guesses. So we'll see if that streak can carry on. Uh, is Kivya going to start? If I had to guess, I actually think Zinchenko does. I won't be surprised if Zinchenko gets a start for this one. It's the sort of fixture where you can afford to rotate a few players. And like Zinchenko just makes sense to bring in. To help break Luton down as well. Kivya just made a lot of sense against City over Zinchenko. That was the right decision. And this fixture for me says Zinchenko over Kirio. And probably a few other changes like Martinelli or Trossard in left wing. Maybe Trossard over Havertz. What is your plan? So I'm looking to go Watkins to Mateta, Gordon to Salah, and then Poro to Gusto for a minus four hit. Three moves. Going to check on Twitter if there's any uh, leaks or news. Palmer's in line for a bumper new contract with an improved pay rise. Not much help. No, it doesn't look like it. 
We'll keep an eye out though. We've got what, 45 minutes till deadline? What chips have you still got? I've got my wild card and no, yeah, wild card and bench boost. So I'm probably going to wild card in game week 35, not 36, because you can dead end your team. So I'll, my moves will probably be I'll probably sell Huang for Sarabia if Huang's a doubt to make 34. And then I'll probably sell Haaland for Darwin. So I'll have triple Liverpool for their double. And then I'll wildcard in 35 to get the likes of Haaland back in. I'll probably sell Darwin because Liverpool don't double in 37. So, I mean, there's a few players that double in 37, like Hoyland, who could be an option, or Isaac. Maybe even Jackson, but that might be a bit too far. Uh, I'll probably get triple Spurs, triple Chelsea, because they'll have a double in 36 in all likelihood. So potentially, I could have 15 doubling in 37, plus 6 doubling in 36. So I could have, what is that, 21 players that double maximum. Plus obviously the doubling in 34. I'm aiming to have 11 doubling in 34. So yeah, that could be like 32 players doubling for me between now and the rest of the season. John says subscribe and Oscar gets his neck tattoo. I'll get the tattoo at 200k, you have my word, but I don't know if it'll be on my neck. My girlfriend would freak if I did that. She told me to get it somewhere more discreet. Not that discreet, not too discreet. Just like my ankle or something. Digging myself a hole here. Vardio or a Castagna? I'd go Vardio. Start Foden or Hoyland asking for my girlfriend. That's a difficult one. I'll probably start Foden. Home fixture. I wonder where is the most discreet. Face tattoo. I could get like the Edison, couldn't I? On his neck. He's got the smiley face. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get this. I could get that, but a focal logo there. No, that'd be bad. I can't have it on my neck, behind my ear. I'm not doing that. It's got to be somewhere less obvious than that. Like, who gets their own tatty logo in an obvious place? Like, the CEO of Nike doesn't walk around with the Nike tick behind his ear. Oh, I forgot about the captain poll. 83% Salah, 6% Saka, 7% Haaland, 3% Other. Tattoo or bum? Yeah, I'm selling Watkins, so I'm going to sell Watkins for Mateta, Gordon for Salah, and then Porro for Gusto. Clean sheet odds? These are the clean sheet odds. Liverpool are the only team with odds are likely to keep one than not. Arsenal very close, 49.5%. City 43. Bournemouth 34. Uh, Forest 27.5. Newcastle and the Wolves tied. And Fulham tied on 27. So actually not great odds for Poro this week, so I feel a bit better about selling him as well now. Doing Mike Tyson tattoo, jeez, imagine. Surely not. Bombs is way too high, there's no way they'll keep a clean sheet. Hey, they nearly did last game, although that was Everton. If Neto didn't spill that ball in the air. The sells to who? Depends how much you've got. Like the best defenders to buy this week are Saliba, Gabriel, Van Dijk. Uh, but if you need cheaper, like Gusto, you look like you're 25. I'm way older than 25. I don't know if you guys know how old I am. Can you guess my age? Tony or Darwin? Darwin. Tattoo on your trill. What's trill? I probably shouldn't have read that one. I don't know what trill is. Let me Google it. What is it? On your arm? 26. Oh yeah, 19, 31, 42. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Wait, how old am I? 
I forgot my age. Hang on. 12th of November, 91. I think I'm 32. Am I 32 or 33? How, how have I forgot my age? I'm 33 in November. I'm losing my mind here. I don't keep track of it like I did when I was a kid, that's for sure. I'm 32, okay. <laughs> Who forgets his age? Me, apparently. I thought I was 33. I'm 32. Oh, let's go. I'm younger than I thought I was. How about some Luis Diaz? I'll go Luis Diaz. Please. Oh, yeah, I need to do my team. Let me look a lock in my transfers before it's too late. So, Poro to Gusto, Gorn to Salah, Watkins to Mateta. Uh, confirm. Done. The moves are made. Let me refresh that. So, there's Salah, Zabane, Captain Salah, Vice Captain Haaland. Save your team. Let's take a screenshot of that. Let's quickly post that, as always. Game week 31. Uh, so Watkins. Gordon, Salah, Poro, Gusto. What moves did you guys make this week? Anyone else buy Salah? There we go. Sorted. Yeah, Gusto behind Zabane, I think makes sense. Yarden says, bench one, Richarlison, Udogi, Bailey, you focal. What is you? F oh, love you focal. Uh, Richarlison, Udogi, Bailey. Hmm. Got to be Bailey. Away to City. Start Richarlison. I think Richarlison starts. Yeah, I'd, I'd bench Bailey. John rolled. Hampu went Watkins to Darwin. Ivor Kans did Ake to White. Rolling. Flames is rolling. So is Agatha. Why Mateta? I had very little money. That was the problem. I couldn't buy Semenyo because I've got triple Bournemouth. So it was basically Munez or Mateta. And Mateta's got Dublin 34. So he just edged it for me. So I'll play him against Bournemouth here. Not ideal because I've got uh, Neto in goal. I'm hoping that Gusto's okay. He's got City. Um, Mateta's got City and then Liverpool in 32 and 33. But there were some rumours going around Twitter just as we were going live saying Gusto reportedly trained with Chelsea this morning. So if that's true, I've got a nice little rotation there. So I can start Gusto. He's got Sheffield United and Everton. So I could bench Mateta for those two. And I might go Huang to Sarabia next week. So then I would play uh, Saliba, Gabriel, Gusto. Mateta drops to the bench and Sarabia comes in. Because uh, Sarabia's got the double in 34. And some nice fixtures before and after. I'll probably wildcard in 34, so... 35, sorry, so I'll miss out on Luton home. But he's got uh, West Ham and Forest before the double. Oh, thanks for the five gifted memberships, Dan. Thanks very much for that, Dan D. Appreciate the support. I tried to make the pitch animate, but it didn't work. These buttons are so delayed. Oh, there we go. That's not what I meant. Should I just leave it like that? Thanks for, thanks for the five gifted memberships, Dan. If you got those from Dan, make sure you thank him. Sponge Babe says I dodged, as always. Didn't get them. Luis Diaz over Salah. Not over Salah. I mean, if you've got a choice, I would definitely get Salah. It won't turn off now. Oh, there we go. No. Oh my god, I'm stuck like this. It literally won't turn off. I'm pressing the button. Oh, I can't do this for the rest of the stream. Oh, it's gone. 
You look cute. <laughs> Thanks. Trippier news. Um, I don't know if Hal said anything on Trippier and his presser. I mean, the Newcastle, Newcastle news I had was just that the, the sales was out for six to nine months. I'm sure he must have mentioned Trippier. Let me see if I can find anything on that. Trippier, Hal. Has anyone got a Trippier update? Trippy is improving. Okay, here we go. Hal said Trippy is improving ahead of the Everton game, but there's no guarantees on his availability. It's been a difficult injury for him, an injury to the calf, one we have to be very careful with, and we'd hope he'd be, he'd be fit in and around the West Ham game. We have to wait and see. He's desperate to be involved, but it has to be at the right time. So, yeah, difficult to interpret his minutes off that. Our oh, Jagannath says, play Palmer or Rice. I've got Dallow in my defence. I would play Palmer, 100%. I know it's never great when you're playing in a midfielder against your defender, but imagine on the other side of the coin, if you bench Palmer because you've got Dallow and then Palmer hauls, and then all you've got to show for it is one point from Dallow, for example. How are we doing, Alex? So yeah, I'd start Palmer, 100%. Is Livermento going to start? I don't know if we got an update on him, but there's rumours he might have picked up an injury. I did read it just now, uh, Jagannath. I'd play Palmer. 8 mil forward, Darwin. Bowen or Matet to start? I'd say Bowen. How are we doing, Adam? Havertz or Diaz? I prefer Diaz. But they're both great options, to be honest. Watkins to Darwin, says Gabriel. Yeah, I like that move. That's a solid move. Uh, let's check out for the most transferred players. Who is the most transferred in this week? Oh, it's Isaac. I thought it'd be Salah. 577,000 have transferred Isaac in. Salah in second, 488,000. And then Darwin. Uh, then Munez, Palmer, White, Bradley, Diaz, Solanke, Kelleher, Aitnori, Saka, Raya. I thought it'd be Sally, you know. Who's the most sold? Wow, 1.1 million of sold Watkins. Ariola in second. Uh, Gordon in third. Then Walker, Madison, Doughty, Louise, Ake, Foden. 130,000 have sold some. I imagine all of those are buying Salah, though. So it's kind of a fair move, to be honest. Palmer or Rice? Palmer for me. I wouldn't bench Palmer in any fixture right now. You know, since he made his full Chelsea debut, only Watkins has got more points, and Watkins has played three more games, which shows just how ridiculous Palmer's season being. Don't mind me, I'm just putting deodorant on. Getting a bit hot. I guess that people are selling Foden because they want to buy Salah. Or they're buying someone with a better fixture like Saka or Diaz. Foden or Bowen? Foden. Thoughts on Kivior? I mean, if I had him, you got to start him, but I wouldn't buy him. It wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, Zinchenko plays in left back. I mean, there's predicted lineups going around with Zinchenko and Tommy Asu in fullback, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's just Zinchenko and White starts and comes off early. Yeah, we could see Trossard and Martinelli left wing. Gavinio says, Hi Oscar, who would your goalkeepers and defenders be on a wildcard 31 if on free hit 34? Petrovic, Gabriel, Gusto, Vardy or Locks at the moment. One goalkeeper, two defenders required with 13 mil. Um, I would have double Arsenal defence, personally. So I'd have Saliba as well. How much does that leave you though? Not much. 13 minus 5.8, 7.2. So that doesn't work. Oh, so you're looking for two really cheap defenders then. But yeah, with 30 mil, it's going to have to be... I mean, you can't really get any good options for that. Um, I mean... You're free hitting 34, so that's irrelevant that week. I'm trying to think, who doubles in 37 that's a cheap defender? There's like Maguire, who's like 4.2. Is there anyone else? I mean, Van Heck? Yeah, Van Heck's like 4 mil. But it's a bad double. I 
Not many options though. That are cheap defenders at doubling 37 because you're on free at 34. Van Heck. I mean, you've got level 30 mil. So Van Heck, Maguire. What does that leave you with? Five mil. And then maybe a Nana. I wouldn't go Dubravka because Pope could be back. So, and you've got Petrovic. So yeah, I'd say a Nana, Van Heck, and then a cheap defender like Maguire that doubles in 37. That's about all you can do with 13 mil. Darwin or Isaac? I prefer Darwin because he doubles in 34. And he's got a better fixture this week. Isn't Pope out for the season? Reportedly, he could be back before the end of the season. So I think Dubravka's a little bit risky now. I mean, I'll be looking to sell him when I wildcard in 35. Uh, Van de Ven update. I imagine he's fine. It was probably just precautionary because he was on the bench last match. So uh, based on that, I would say he starts. Start Vardio or Udogi? I'd start Vardio. Uh, CFJW, thanks for that. Yeah, there was a report that he's out for the season, but then the more reliable source said that he's not. I'll show you the tweet. So we could see Pope back before Double Gimmick 37. Um, here it is. So, yeah, it was here. Nick Pope on track to return before the end of the season and make a late push for the Euros. So, yeah, we might not have Dubravka as an option. Or is there more news I've missed? Can we have the full news roundup? Yeah, we'll do a very quick news roundup. So, here's all the news. Start with Art Arsenal. Um, Arteta said on Saka he's fine. He hasn't trained, just recovered. Uh, we have a short light training session today to prepare for the game and we'll see if he's in the best condition to start or not. And then someone was at that training session and they said Saka is out here training with his teammates. Uh, and then Luton news. Edwards said he's not sure if Doughty, Burke or Chong are going to be fit for the Arsenal game. And a further 10 first team players are out. City news. Guardiola said that Ake, Edison and Walker are out of uh, tomorrow's game against Villa. Stones is only a maybe. And then Lascelles has picked up an ACL injury and he's going to be out for six to nine months. So he might have played his last game in the Newcastle shirt unless they offer him a new contract. Uh, Watkins has been ruled out for the trip to Man City, but he could return to face Brent for the weekend after a few days rest. And then lastly, Chelsea. Rumours going around Twitter saying, uh, believe Gusto trained with the Chelsea first team this morning. So that's why I've picked up Gusto. My moves, if anyone's joined late, was... Uh, Watkins to Mateta, Gordon to Salah, and then Poro to Gusto. Uh, what does my challenge team look like? This is my FPL challenge team. Kelleher, Saliba, Gabriel, Bradley, Aitnori, Salah, Saka, Havertz, Haaland, Darwin, and Isaac. Double points off strikers this week, so make sure you've got a front three. Uh, and make sure you captain one of them for quadruple points. Yeah, I did look at Munoz, Alex, but Mateta's got a double in 34. So for me, he just edges it for that reason. And then assuming Gusto's okay, I'll bench Mateta for these two games and I'll start Gusto. And I might sell Huang for Sarabia if Huang's still not nearing a return next week. My stomach is rumbling like crazy. I'm starving. Will Richarlison start? I think he will. He's on the bench last match. I think he starts this one, yeah. Yeah, it's typical for players to get a cameo before or when coming back from injury. So I reckon that was his cameo and now he starts. Start Sarabia or Solanke? I'll start Solanke. Son or Salah? Salah. Start Sells or Anana? Sells. Minus four for KDB to Luis Diaz? Probably not. I quite like this fixture for City. Have one of Teddy's chews. I wish I had crisps or something, yeah. I feel sick, I'm so hungry now. Gusto or Bramthwaite? Hmm. I would take a chance on Gusto. Minus eight to switch Ariola to another keeper. I don't have a playing keeper. I would in that scenario, yeah. I would do it. 
That's alright, half an hour till the deadline. I'll eat after. And thanks for the super chat, Miner, who says, uh, Hey Oscar, would you minus a Madison, Doughty and Watkins to Salah, Van Dyke and Semenyo? So Madison, Doughty, Watkins to Salah, Van Dyke, Semenyo, or do a minus four, Madison, Doughty to Salah and Van Dyke, but then I need to start Gusto. Hmm. I don't think you need the minus eight. I think playing Gusto is all right. I have a feeling he's going to be all right. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts even. Based on the rumours that he trained this morning, and they're going to want to use him against Man United. On paper, it should be a much tougher game than Burnley, but they just conceded twice to Burnley. Ten-man Burnley. So I would avoid the minus eight, actually. Yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, they're both very close. Like, you'd expect Van Dyke to keep a clean sheet and probably repay that here. But it's not a necessary minus eight, basically. Because then if Van Dyke gets six and Gusto gets two, then it's the same thing. M-I-N-E-R is how it's spelled. That minor, like Minecraft. <laughs> that is a bait username, isn't it? Mateta or Poro? I would start Mateta. Play the striker. Will Saka start? Probably. I reckon he starts and comes off early, but you never know. Zabani or Adogi? Adogi. Is a wild card worth it? I mean, if your team's in bad shape and you've got lots of problems, no Salah, and you're looking at hits to get Salah, for example, then I'd consider it. Saka or Foden? Saka. Saka or Darwin? I mean, it's got to be Saka again, but they're very close this week. Start Sarabi or Mateta. I'd probably give Mateta the start. Yeah. Let's check if there's been any early team news. Give me a sec. Uh, Liss, Leaks. No, I don't look like it. How long we got? Just under half an hour till deadline. We'll keep an eye out. Hard to say if Cunha will start for the Cunha questions because he wasn't even on the bench last match. So I think I'd rather start Garnacho to answer Tony's question. I was surprised he wasn't even on the bench, which makes me think I probably wouldn't play him if I had him. I think he's, okay. he's a great transfer if you're going to bench him and just hope that he'll be alright to start from Gemic 32, but he's a bit risky this week, I think. Like, why wasn't he even on the bench? And that was only a few days ago. Uh, Watkins and Bowen for Darwin and Saka for a hit on 3 hit 34. Yeah, that's worth a minus four. If there's ever a minus four that's worth it, it's going to be bringing in Darwin and Saka home to Sheffield United and Luton. Top of the table versus bottom of the table. Yeah, I would do it, even on 3 hit 34. Uh, Jared says, Hi mate, Watkins and De Bruyne to Darwin and Salah for a minus four. And who would you bench out of Gusto, Porro and Garnacho? I'm thinking Garnacho, but I don't like playing back four. So yeah, I like the minus four. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Obviously KDB could punish, Watkins won't play, but you got Darwin and Salah home to Sheffield United. Easy minus four if there ever was one. I mean, I'm taking a minus four for Salah and it doesn't involve Darwin. Um, I think I'd probably bench Gusto. And they'd have to play a back four either. <laughs> I'd start Poro and Garnacho. Just because we're not sure if Gusto's fully fit. There's rumours he trained this morning, but he might not start. So I'd uh, I'd bench him and play the other two. Uh, play Zabane or Regulon? I would play Regulon. Quite close to that one, but I'd play Regulon. They're probably similar clean sheet odds, but Regulon's got more upside. Takes some set pieces, corners sometimes. <laughs> Start Petrovic or Pickford. Petrovic. Keepers for a wild card. If I was on a wild card, I'd have Raya and Petrovic probably. Because then you've got three doubles between them for the rest of the season. I think that's what I would do. Who do you support? Arsenal. 
Mateta or Munez? I went Mateta because he's got Dublin 34, but if you're going to free hit 34, then Munez. There's quite a few quite a few moves like that that kind of depend on what chips you got left. If you're free hitting 34, then you can make transfers just looking at the the games before. Munez has got better fixtures. Like Mateta's got Palace and Liverpool before his double. Start Solanke or Munez? I'd start Solanke. Isaac or Cunha? Kun, uh, Isaac. Darwin or Solanke? Darwin. You're a Liverpool fan. Any Wolves news? Um, I haven't got any here. There might be. There might be some. Let me check. Premier injuries. I mean, Huang's ETA is 20th of April, so I might have to sell him next game week because I need a midfielder I can start because I don't want to play Mateta. And 20th of April is game week 34, so I might end up buying Sarabia. Um, Neto might miss the season. Yeah, Cunha's available. That's about all I've got. Uh, O'Neill did say last match that he, that he brought off um, 8 Noru because he was looking tired because he'd played two games for Algeria over the break. So he, he said he wasn't looking at his absolute best. Start Regulon or Gusto? I'll start Regulon. 8 Nori or Bradley? If that's who to start, Bradley. I prefer 8 Nori as a longer term transfer though, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Barnes or McAllister? McAllister. Garnacho or Adogi? Mm, quite a close one. I'd say Garnacho. I mean, these are clean sheet odds. SJ says, what's the clean sheet odds? And Spurs don't have great odds this week, so I just would favour the attacker there and Garnacho. 22% for Spurs. Liverpool, 52%. Arsenal, 49.5%. City, 43%. Neto for Petrovic, minus four. No, I wouldn't do that, Johnny. If anything, that might be a downgrade this week. So where's Bournemouth on there? Bournemouth, 34% chance of a clean sheet. Clean sheet. Uh, Chelsea 25% so uh, not a move you need to make this week you could do it next week next, uh, on the weekend game week 32 but now he does have loot in a way so not a priority move but yeah you could consider it then not now by Cunha or Darwin Darwin Foden or Munez Foden start Lamptey Estupinian or Mateta this week I would back the attacker play Mateta What's your chip strategy? I'm going to dead end into game week 34. So I'll probably go Huang to Sarabia, game week 32. Roll, game week 33. And then I'll do like Haaland to Darwin. Uh, and then maybe Sun to Eze. And then I'll wildcard 35, bench boost 37. That's my plan at the moment. Is anyone else on the same plan? Or are people on free hit 34? Saka or Havertz? Saka. What's your challenge team? My challenge team is as follows. Cam Camiped says, Madison to Salah, Watkins for Mubama with minus four. Yeah, I think that's fine. I assume he can't afford someone like Semenyo or Munez, but I think that's fine. If that's your only route to him, then I'd say that's worth it. Because, I mean, as we saw on the projected points, look, Salah's comfortably top this week. It's not even close. Salah 9.7, Haaland 7.5, Saka 7, Darwin 6.7, Erdogan, Luis Diaz, Sun, Havertz, Palmer, Tony. So I don't think it's even close this week. <laughs> Sorry. Lascelles replacement. Um, Gusto is 4.3 mil. Richards is 3.9 mil, but I wouldn't want to start him this week so it's not a great move you're not going to want to play him but between now and game 34 Palmer or Sarabia Palmer CFJW says Jao Pedro and Luis Diaz or Darwin and Garnacho he's on wildcard 31 free hit 34 bench boost 37 go for the second one Darwin Garnacho yeah 100% Isaac or Darwin Darwin Russell says Watkins or Semenyo to Moreno. Hang on. Watkins or Semenyo and Moreno to Haaland 
or Darwin and White or Van Dyke for a hit. I've got Gabriel Stupin and Phone Sack. Salapama, Sun Saka, Solanke, no Harlem FOMO. So what is it? Watkins to Haaland. I wouldn't sell Darwin for Haaland for a hit. Definitely not. Are you saying you can sell Watkins to Haaland? I'm trying to understand what you're saying there. Watkins and Moreno. I mean, if you can sell Watkins and Moreno for Haaland and another defender, that's worth it. Is that what you're saying? I would do that. That's fast fine from minus four. Like Watkins is out for the game anyway. Moreno's away to City. I wouldn't sell Darwin. Is that what you meant, Russell? That's what I would do. Minus eight for Salah. I think it's okay to take a minus eight for Salah, but it depends who you're selling. Team news? Yeah, we'll do a very quick final team news roundup. Uh, Arsenal first. Saka said, um, Arteta said Saka's fine. We haven't trained, just recovered, and they've got a short, light training session today. And then someone at the training session said um, they saw Saka and he's out training with the teammates. I mean, he's still not guaranteed to start, but he is training, so that's good. Rob Edwards said he's unsure if Doughty, Burke, and Chong are going to be fit for that game, and the further 10 players out. So it could be a goal fest, that one. Pep's ruled out Ake, Edison and Walker for the match against Villa tomorrow. And John Stones is a maybe. Lascelles is out for six to nine months. He's going to miss the rest of the season. Villa news is that Watkins has been ruled out of the game against City. Could be back to face Brentford on the weekend after a few days rest. And then there are a few rumours going around on Twitter. I don't know if they're reliable or not that Gusto trained this morning. But I saw a few people saying it on Twitter, so... I'm taking a chance on that reliability and I've brought in Gusto myself. So my moves for anyone that's joined late was Watkins to Mateta, uh, Gordon to Salah and then Poro to Gusto. Uh, that's what I've done. Just checking for leaks. Nothing at the moment. If there is anything I'll let you know but nothing at the moment. Let me just put my phone here. There we go. Beto or Werner? Beto or Werner? Is that on draft or what? I'm not sure if either start, but I'd probably say Beto. I wouldn't buy either though. The only way I can get to Salah is by selling Erdegaard and a minus 8 or a minus 12. Is it worth it? We'll just go for Darwin and hope Salah comes off injured. Yeah, in that scenario, I wouldn't be taking minus 8 selling Odegaard or even minus 12s just get Darwin I mean you can't hope Salah comes off injured Can't I can't vouch for that but I think yeah in that scenario just try and cover the fixture so you buy Darwin or you buy Diaz how long we got we've got 15 minutes till deadline keep your questions coming if you've enjoyed the stream then don't forget to like it and make sure you're subscribing. Douglas Louise or Rice? Rice. Virgil or Luis Diaz? That is a difficult one. Depends who you're selling, really. Depends who you're selling, because they're different positions. Diaz is obviously more upside. So Diaz. But yeah, it depends on who you're selling there. How are we doing, Bibek? Welcome to the stream. Is Cunha fit? Yeah, he's reportedly is. His flag's gone. It's just we don't know if he's going to start or be on the bench, basically. Kwanzaa. I reckon Kanate comes in centre-back this game. That'd be my guess. I'll keep an eye out for any Wolves news or leaks. I know a lot of people want to know about Cunha. I don't know if we're going to get any. I don't remember ever getting Wolves leaks. But I'll keep an eye out. Darwin or Isaac? I prefer Darwin. I know he's not guaranteed to start, but he's got a better fixture and he doubles in 34. So I feel like you chase the upside with Darwin. Haaland or Darwin? Haaland. Munoz or Garnacho? Munoz. Best keeper? Raya, probably. And then Petrovic. If Edison was fit, like, I'd say Edison would be in with a shout. He's got really good fixtures, but. He's out for this game. 
I think I'm going to buy Edison again. One last roll of the dice. He did alright for me earlier in the season. I think I'll have him on my wildcard 35. Start Morris or Regulon? Regulon. Teddy? No. He's licking his butt on my bed. Don't want to see that. Cunha or Munez? I would go Munez. If that's who to buy, I think Cunha's better. But I wouldn't want to start him. So it depends if you could buy him and bench him for this week. And then you've got the nice fixtures after. Is Gusto starting? Hard to say. There's rumours he trained this morning, but... He could be on the bench. If I had to guess, based on that, I'd say he probably does start. Russell says, Watkins to Darwin. Uh, or Haaland and Moreno to White and Van Dyke. Okay, so Watkins to Haaland. Or Haaland and Moreno to White and Van Dyke. Hang on. Haaland and Moreno to White and Van Dyke. Don't, I'm not sure I understand that one either, Russell. How can it be Haaland and Moreno to White and Van Dyke? White and Van Dyke are both defenders. What do you mean? I'll come back to that in a sec. Mate says, Lascelles de Vardio. I need him for Gemic 37. Yeah, I think that's a good move. Obviously, it's a while away 37, and Ake could be back. But Vardio really impressed me against Arsenal. I think he was maybe City's best player. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a run of starts. So I like that move. I'm just going to check chat for Russell's message. Sorry, Watkins to Darwin. Watkins to Darwin or Haaland and Moreno. You said it again. What do you mean? Hang on. Haaland and Moreno to White or Van Dyke. How can it be Haaland and Moreno to White or Van Dyke? Van Dyke. Definitely Van Dyke. Not White. I prefer Van Dyke. Oh, Watkins to Darwin or Haaland. Okay, sorry. Haaland. Yeah, Haaland. Definitely Haaland. Did I get it right? I think I read that right. Watkins to Darwin or Haaland. Yeah, Haaland. Sorry, Russell. That might be me. I don't think that was you. Zabani or Poro? I'd go Poro just because he's got the attacking upside. Zabani, generally six-point ceiling. Except that game where he kept where he scored the goal and the double. But other than that, like six point ceiling pretty much. So I'd play Poro. Don't think there'll be any Cunha leaks, but I'll keep checking in the background in case anything comes through. Or any other team news. Is there any other players you guys want to know about? So tonight we've got Newcastle v Everton, Forest v Fulham, Bournemouth v Palace, Burnley v Wolves and West Ham v Spurs. I suppose Richarlison would be good, because some people have got him right. I, I reckon he starts. I reckon it's Richarlison, Son, Kulusevski front three. Or maybe Johnson starts over Kulu. Gusto or Regulon? Regulon. Sarabi or Eze? Ah, it's difficult, because Eze's got bad fixtures after this week, so probably Sarabia. And then maybe you have the option to buy Eze later. That's the way I'm doing it. I'll probably buy Sarabia, Gemic 32, and then maybe buy Eze at 34 for Sun when Sun blanks. And Eze's just, his injury record's so bad that I'd rather buy him straight into the game week anyway. Asad says I'm on 40k rank. Is that good? That's very good. Uh, Toge, thanks for becoming an FBL Focal member as well. First one of the stream, I think. So thanks very much for that. Besides the ones that were gifted earlier. So thanks very much for that. If anyone else wants to become a member, it's the join button below the stream. Um, you get access to the members channel on Discord, early access to videos, you get a badge by your name in chat and comments. Uh, and obviously it supports the channel for like a, quid, a couple of quid. Uh, Shelly says, how bad is Santa Sala and Watkins to Munez? I'm not a massive fan of that. I'd rather just do Watkins to Darwin. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I'd rather. I guess you can't afford that. For me, it was going to be Sun to Salah and Watkins to Darwin, or I go for a cheap defender like Mateta and keep Sun, and I went for that second route. It's not bad though. Can you do that for free, Shelley? I'd probably do it for free. I'd do it for free. 
From minus four, no, I probably wouldn't. I'd just do Watkins to Darwin. But like, yeah, it depends. If you want to just protect your rank as well, then buying Salah is just the way to go. Ismail with the super chat, but message retracted. I don't know what that said. I missed that. We've got eight minutes till deadline. Keep the questions coming. I'm going to pick out as many as possible. Uh, Poro or Sabane? Poro. Is Cunha starting? Not sure on Cunha. I'll keep checking if there's any leaks, but no idea. He wasn't on the bench last match even, so I wouldn't be surprised if he starts on the bench and then comes on. Sem van der Krommer. Love the username. Sem van der Krommer. Thanks for becoming a member as well. Appreciate the support. Thanks for that. Sem van der Krommert. If you want the access to the members channel on Discord, then uh, just go in Discord settings and log into your YouTube account and you'll see it. Uh, if anyone's got questions like Neto or Flecken, I saw a few. These are the clean sheet odds. And I would just back the uh, the clean sheet odds for that one. I mean, Brentford have got 22% chance. Bournemouth 34, so Neto. Udogi or Poro? I don't think there's much between them right now. So I think Udogi, if that's who to buy or like who to start. Poro's not done that much as of late, so I'd rather Udogi. And he's cheaper if it's who to buy or on your wildcard. Start Gusto or Udogi? I'll start Udogi. No leaks. I'll keep checking. Maybe we get something. But the teams that play tonight are teams we generally don't get any for. But I'll keep checking in case anything comes through last minute. Uh, Richarlison or Johnson? Richarlison. Start Hoyland or Garnacho? Hoyland. Ferris and Diaz? Good enabler? Nah, not for me. I'd rather Sarabia or Garnacho. Start Gross or Cunha? I'll start Gross just because you know he's going to start. Cunha might not. I mean, it's not guaranteed with Gross, but he's almost certainly going to start. Van de Ven or Zabane from Ismail. What's the clean sheet odds saying on that one? Spurs 34% chance. Tottenham 22. Yeah, I'd start Zabane there. Start Zabane. Bench Van de Ven. I reckon Van de Ven comes back into the team, but he was benched last match. So that's also in Zabani's favour, who definitely starts. Uh, Munez versus Madison. I'd rather start Madison, to be honest. Madison is dual hall. Lamptey or Gusto? Lamptey. Quanza or Kivior? To be honest, I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if both are benched, but Kivior. Brighton are in 122.8 mil profit this season. Fair play. Very well run club. Uh, no leaks. I mean, Saka's been seen in training today, so that, that's good news. There's Saka in training. For those that are worried about him. If anyone was joined last minute, my moves were Watkins to Mateta. Um, I did Gordon to Salah, and I did Poro to Gusto. Kivio from minus four. Not for me. Not for me. I mean, I remember last time someone asked that and I said, not for minus four. And I think he scored. But I'm I'm not sure if he even starts. It wouldn't surprise me if Zinchenko gets to start this one. If there was ever a fixture for Arteta to rate, rotate a few players, it's got to be Luton home. So I wouldn't I wouldn't take a hit for Kivior. I think Saliba for a hit's okay. To answer JT's question. Martinelli was in training today as well. So was Saliba, Gabriel. Nothing else. Garnacho or Munoz? I think you've got to play Munoz, haven't you? Uh, as H says, thanks, Oscar, you're the best. Thanks, as for the super chat. Appreciate that. Estupinan or Poro? I'd play Poro because Estupinan might not even start. It could be Igor and Lamptey in fullback. Go with Poro. Foden or Luis Diaz on the wild card. Depends if you're going to free hit 34. If you're not, Luis Diaz. If you are, Foden. Cunha or Garnacho. Just I'm not sure if Cunha starts or comes off the bench. So 
Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, I wouldn't start Cunha. Bradley, captain. That is, no, I think that's too risky. I mean, this is the final projected points for the game week from FPL Review. Salas top, then Haaland. Saka, Darwin, Erdegaard, Luis Diaz, Son, Havertz, Palmer, Tony. Those are all ahead of Bradley on the projections. Don't get me wrong, though. Like, Liverpool's clean sheet odds are the best this week. But imagine if Klopp goes Simicast left back, Gomez right back, or something like that. Probably won't happen, but I wouldn't captain someone unless I was really confident they'll start. John says, two-minute warning. Two minutes to go till deadline. Don't think we've got any any leaks today. Nothing coming up here. Uh, Sem van der Kromet says, Mateta or Munoz on a wild card? No free hit left. I would go Mateta, Sem. You've got two minutes, if that, to lock that in. For me, it's Mateta. That's why I've got him. Because... I haven't got my free hit, so I'm looking at 34. And so I've got Mateta. I'll bench him in 32 and 33. I've got Gusto, who, assuming he's okay, has nice fixtures. Munoz or Kudus? I mean, you've got to play Munoz, haven't you? He's got eight goals and eight. I'd play Munoz. Udogi or Gusto? Udogi. Zabane or eight Nori? I'd take the chance on eight Nori. I love that autocorrect changed it to ain't nori. I mean, maybe ain't nori doesn't start, but uh, I'd go ain't nori. He's got Burnley, like you got to play him for that one. Your wife says Munoz over Kudis as well. There we go. Let me just check my team saved in. You got a minute to make sure your team's locked in, captain sorted. So yeah, my team's sorted. Watkins to Mateta, Gorn to Salah, Poro to Gusto. Play Bram, play Bramthwaite or Maguire. Bramthwaite. Gusto or Van der Ven? I'll take a chance on Gusto there. Best week to wildcard. I'm looking to use it in 35. Because you can dead end your team into 34. Wildcard out of it to get players back in that you've sold. And then bench boost 37. And then it will Petrovic. Petrovic. It was a minus four. Yeah, minus four hit for that. Start 8 Nori or Vardio. Vardio. I think that is the deadline. I think that is it. We're there. We made it. Another deadline stream. Five games tonight. And then we've got more tomorrow. And then we've got, I think, a couple on Thursday as well. I'm absolutely starving, so I'm not going to stick around. But thank you all for tuning in. Good turnout today. If you enjoyed the stream, don't forget to like it before you go and subscribe. Uh, FPL Tony says he's been told that Livermento is ruled out for tonight's game. I mentioned that earlier. I said there was rumours that Livermento's out. So uh, thanks all. Uh, thanks LXND. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'm going to disappear now. And uh, I'll be around on Discord and Twitter tonight. So enjoy the games everyone. Good luck this game week. Focal out.